Who was here yesterday? Come on. Who was not here yesterday? About half of them. I shared my testimony yesterday and I'll just kind of rehearse the testimony in short. And if you have questions, you can come ask me later. I was born and raised in Mexico and I was the ninth out of 12 children. My parents kept it a secret to my siblings what I was, a boy or a girl. They would dress me like a girl some days and some days like a boy. But they wouldn't give me a name for the first week. I only found out later after I had gotten deliverance. The girls wanted me to be a girl and the boys wanted me to be a boy. One day my boy, my older brothers took off my, my diaper and checked that out. The game was over. <laughs> but my dad always said I should have been a girl. And that really bothered me a lot. But praise God, my dad, when he was 65 years old, he gave his life to Jesus. <laughs> and he lived till he was 78 when he passed away 12 years ago. My mom is 87 now. She's given her life to Jesus too. Woo, yes. Serving the Lord. I'm so thankful for, for my parents. They did At the time, they did the best they could. But if you have little children, treat boys, like, boys and girls like girls. Yes. The school will try to confuse them to which bathroom to go. But the devil should be confused about you and your children. Not we about our, our genders. Amen, the government is trying to help you. Not, not trying to help, help the enemy to confuse us. And I was one of those confused people. Sexually abused, all these things. Got baptized, just this part of my head. <laughs> to get married. There was the only way, there was the only way into marriage was being baptized. And that's all we knew about uh, at that time. Got married in 1992, 1993, we moved to, moved to Canada, we lived there for 14 years, but 1996, that's when I gave my life to Jesus. And that's where I was an old order Mennonite person, that when I grew up, that's where we were under. And like I said yesterday, 2007, the Lord spoke to us to go back to, to, to our old Mennonite people, to minister to them, and that's what we did. And even as a pastor, some days I, I wish we would have not. We were, went there in 2007, we started a school and started churches and it was, was amazing. Very religious, like my daughter says. I was a school teacher. I had clips for the girls in my, in my drawer. If the girls would come to school and they would not have their, their bangs clipped to the sides, they would be going home or I would do their hair. I would do their hair the way Jesus wanted them to, to have them. <laughs> and I hope those students have forgiven me already. But that's how religious I was. You probably don't know me that kind of way. Growing up, I was the shyest person. I wouldn't even say hi to anybody. I was just hoping nobody would speak to me. I hated Jesus. I didn't like, I was so scared of him. Because my school teacher had told me, if you have sinned, you'll burn in a fire. And that's the end of the story that he told us. And I, we knew for sure I had been bad. And I was, I was doomed to hell. I knew for sure. And I got a picture in my hand of what Jesus looked like. Every, and, and the teacher says, you can't hide from Jesus. And I was trying to make hiding places. I dug a hole in the woods, put a lid in there. I had tasted roots already and they didn't taste so bad. I would be surviving somehow. Jesus would not find me. Every time a vehicle would drive onto our yard, I would look and see what, how Jesus is. Is Jesus in there? I was about eight years old, eight to ten years old. I'm not sure how old I was. All of a sudden, there's an old Grandma Key's car driving onto our yard, and Jesus is sitting in the back of his, of his in the back seat with a, with a, a rod. I, at least the person that I had imagined Jesus had orange hair, but this long and looking like evil, and that was that person. And I ran inside of the house, climbed up in the attic. The hot, behind the chimney, I had put up a paper box. I, I sat in there, my mom was baking, and she had fire and stove. That chimney was cooking hot. And I was very close to it, and I sat in there, just hoping Jesus wouldn't find me. I don't know how long I sat there. I was soaking wet. That was like a sauna, the worst sauna I've ever been in. 
When I came out, I was just sneaking. See, is the car still here? Is the car still here? Is the car still here? Car was gone. Now I had proof in my. This is one my own world. I had proof Jesus wouldn't find me. He's not going to find me when he comes back. That evil person? Uh uh. He's not going to throw me into hell. He's not getting me. That's what I was fighting with when I grew up. And now to know Jesus loves you as a child already. Yeah. Yeah. We can run to Jesus with every problem that we have. Yes, come on. We had five children in Canada. In 2007, we went back to Mexico. We started a school. We started churches. The church excommunicated me. The church paid $10,000 to the cartels to kidnap me, to kill me. And when I was in front of a big machine gun, Jesus touched my shoulders and he says, John, I've got this. And I says, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo, yes. And I was thinking, oh, Jesus is coming to get me home. This is the day I'm going to meet Jesus. And that wasn't, the, that, Jesus was there to fight. And the scripture even says, Jesus will fight for us. I wasn't, I was in no position to fight the battle. Jesus fought the battle. We came back. This was 2012 and we kept on serving the Lord. 2017, I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's where my whole life changed. I started reading my Bible nine to 10 hours a day, every single day. I would just wait till my wife would fall asleep and I was up in the living room and I was reading my Bible. After, Who wants to sleep if you have a Bible in the house? Yeah, when you're sleeping, you're not doing anything. That's why I, I was thinking like, if you can read the Bible or sleep, I read my Bible way over sleep. Three o'clock in the morning, my wife comes and she turns to life and says, John, it's time to sleep. Stop that nonsense. I says, who wants to sleep? But yeah, I just surrender. I just come to bed. I went to bed. When she falls asleep, I was gone. And she got so flustered about me. She starts reading it too. She's going to prove me I'm wrong. Guess what? She got convicted. She got the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So we were both studying. This happened in 2017. In 2019, it's, you already heard a testimony of my daughter. Like, the church got so mad at us. And why, why do I know that they paid $10,000 to kill me? The person that gave the money to the cartels was my wife's cousin. He, she, he took it from the bishop's money or whatever, the, the church's money, and brought it to the cartels. And he was searching for power. Now that they didn't kill us, he wanted to, to know what do you have that they couldn't kill you? I want that. He gave his life to Jesus. He got born again, and he came to our church and shared his testimony. That's where we know ten thousand dollars come from. That's Jesus. But later, like the, the church got so mad that they actually paid the cartel to kill my wife, and that was another a totally different level of forgiveness that I had to work through. But praise God, I got freedom of last year that I got could forgive these people. But not, if you have unforgiveness in your heart, it puts you in a cage, like a bird, and you can't get out. I was thinking I had those guys in the cage, but those guys, they were loose. When I got freedom, I got deliverance from that unforgiveness, and I got that could get, forgive from the heart. I became like a bird. I would fly in town, I sat in every neighbor's street, whoever they want, if I, whether they want me there or not. I could be free. <laughs> and that reminds me of when we go to heaven, a lot of people, all those naysayers, if they're going to be there, they can't lock themselves up because they will just walk right in. <laughs> Jesus says, Lord, glorify buddy. He walked right through cement walls. Yeah. He'll do the same. Yeah, if you're planning to be in heaven, plan to meet me. Yeah. I'll be there. Amen. And the topic of for, for tonight is on deliverance. Who, who believes on deliverance? We already prayed in the Lord's prayer, deliver, deliver us from all evil. I'm glad everybody in here believes that we can be delivered from, from all evil. We can be delivered from all demons. You might say, I'm a Christian, but I don't have a demon. If you're a Christian, you can still. I'm not saying demon possessed, but demon oppressed. Very much so. I have experienced that. I want to look at the Bible. What, what, how did Jesus do deliverance? And how do we do deliverance? I want to tell you a story about my grandfather. When I was 15 years of age, I, I shared yesterday already, my grandmother adopted me 
and I will be a, will be there, their, their host. My grandma and grandpa would never go to church. Never. I've never seen them in church. Not once in, in my life. I was 15 years of age when they died. But I've never seen them to church. Every day at 5 o'clock in the morning, they would get up. They would sing hymns. And they would read the Bible. From 5 to 7. Every single morning. Those those three months I lived there, this is what they would do. Every single, mo every single mo morning, they would do it. And when my grandmother passed away, I didn't want to live anymore. She had boldness. And I wanted that boldness that she had. And there was evangelists coming to town. And I was a child and I was always very, very close to my grandmother. And this guy, he was preaching to my grandmother. And my grandmother says, hey, uh, you think you have no sins? You're going to heaven if you die today? And this guy says, of course I do. And my grandpa's name was Dave. And, he, and my grandma says, Dave, Dave. And my grandpa says, what? Bring me an ax. What do you want to do with an ax? I'm going to kill this person. This is, her person is sinless. And I want to make sure he's not going to sin again. It's evil. But I thought to myself, that's, that's a pretty cool grandma. <laughs> That's my lady. That's who I, how I want her to be. But a bad thing. That's where she was a very bad influence to me. Very bad influence. But later when she died, my grandpa started grieving so heavy. It was about three months later that he died. He started grieving and grieving and grieving. He was 77. And he got very, very sick. And they took him to the doctors. And the doctors didn't find nothing on him. Nothing. And he got so scared. But he came to our house, and when he got scared, he goes, And me, my mother would call us in from the barn of Rhode Island Ward. We came in, and we were praying the Lord's Prayer. That was the only prayer we've ever prayed, the only, the only prayer we were allowed to pray. And we were praying the Lord's Prayer like a machine gun. Like sometimes for hours. And my grandma was, He was like a tuba for it was horrifying and this lasted for 11 days and I was a kid 15 years old and I was so curious I wanted to know everything the pastors came to visit every day and the pastors when they, when they left I wasn't allowed close I was because I was a child but I would, would listen I would hide somewhere and listen see what they would say to my parents about my grandpa and they said this is the grace of God this is the way to heaven I told myself I'd rather be in hell if I'm supposed to walk through this, what my grandpa's going through? I didn't know how bad hell was, but I saw how bad this was. Can you still see how I had my own world of God? Of the he heavenly light, language, whatever? It was all dirty and bad. And they said it was of God that this man was being tormented. The doctors couldn't find nothing. And this was happening for 11 days in a row. Every day. Sometimes in the middle of the night, my mom would call us down and we were sitting upstairs and we were all downstairs and we were praying, and we were praying, and we were praying. And day number 11, my grandma's sister comes over and she says, this night I will be staying here. I'll be praying. And that gave me some comfort already. Now we wouldn't be by, wouldn't be by, by ourselves. My, grandma was, uh, my grandma's sister wasn't going to be there. At midnight, my mom called again an hour. I was always the first one beside my grandpa's bed and the first one on, on my knees and praying, 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 and the Lord's Prayer like over and over and over. And my grandma's sister, she very calmly walks in the room, up to the bed, and my grandma was and my grandma's sister, she just grabbed him by the shoulders like this. And she shook him like this, and she says, Dave, this is enough. You're not gonna have this anymore. She says, This is of the devil, and he needs to leave today. Amen. And that scared the living daylights out of me. Like, that's how you treat a sick person? Nobody had an idea what was happening. But she kept on calling the devil, uh, the, the tormenting spirit out of him and the spirit of fear and all these words. She, she called him out. And I was gone. I knew for sure she was going to pray my grandpa to death and that was the end of it. <laughs> At midnight, I was, but I was so curious. I wanted to see what was going to happen. I went outside and peeked through the window and she was just calling these demons out. All of a sudden, my grandpa went like, Oh, brother, here we go. Pray him to death, just like I thought you would. 
I ran into the house as quick as I could. My grandpa, I wanted to say goodbye to my grandpa. And he was having the biggest smile I've ever seen anybody have on his face. Nobody had the audacity to ask my grandma's sister what had happened, or what she had done, or why she had done it. That was a mystery. Nobody knew what had happened. When I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, I was reading Mark 16, and I saw casting out demons as cross today. And as I was searching my mind, is there has anything like this ever happened before? Because I didn't know that was unheard of for me. And then the Lord brought me back to my grandpa. And that was like a light bulb. I was in my car driving to my mom's place. I said, Do you remember what happened to your dad at that, at that time, at that evening? And grandma says, Was here? She says, Yes. I said, Do you know what happened? She says, Yes. She says, My auntie was here and she was praying and to comfort. She says, No, no. She's casting out demons. Remember how she prayed, devil? This is enough. Yeah, actually, I do remember what she says. So that was a deliverance we, we talked about. I, mean, I read this verse of Mark 16 over and over and over. That's when I was 15 years old. I saw a deliverance by, this was 1985. But it only came to me in 2017 when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit to see what had happened there. How many people go to the doctor like my grandpa did? The doctors do tests and tests and they, they can't find nothing. A demon will not show up in an x-ray. A demon will not show up in, in any blood test. A demon has to be cast out. Yes. It needs to be removed. Yes, if the, if you cannot counsel a demon. You cannot comfort a demon. You can shut him up so that, they, that he gives this person a break for a while. But he will, he will still be there. He will show up again. The demons need to be removed. And they don't need to be asked to remove. They need to be told by force they move in the name of Jesus. They have to leave in the name of Jesus. That's a command that Jesus gives us. Like in Matthew chapter 10, Jesus calls us 12 disciples. Who is a disciple of Jesus in here today? If you are a disciple of Jesus Christ today, Jesus tells you today, Cast out demons, heal all kinds of sickness, raise the dead. Freely you have received, freely you shall give. It's a calling for each and every one of you. And if you don't have that calling yet, you haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you haven't received Jesus as your personal Savior, it's all available today. You can receive Jesus today, you can get delivered today, and you can be buried. The baptism time is right there. I remember my oldest son and I, we were baptized, my daughter Lorena. And before she sat down in the baptism tub, and my oldest son says, Bye, Lorena. When you're coming back, you will be different. So I just want to say goodbye to you. I've never heard that before. <laughs> I thought it was kind of interesting. But that was a prophecy. She did come back differently. Yeah. I've never seen anybody more transform, transformed than her when she came out of that baptism pub. I've, I've seen a lot of things in the baptism pub. I have seen deliverance in the baptism, <laughs> baptism pub. I have seen a, a person grow two inches in there. All sorts of stuff can happen. But if you've only been sprinkled on your head, only been have a little piece of holiness, today is the day you have a chance to get holy. Get right with Jesus. We were, we were only the seven piece of holiness. When we studied the Bible, we studied the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We didn't know anybody that would baptize us. We had Bible study and the Holy Spirit revealed it to us that we weren't, we weren't baptized upon our faith. We were baptized to get married of just a little piece. And I said, this is enough. I'm going to the river. Who's coming what? So a bunch of us men went to the river and we baptized each other. I was the first one going under, and the next, we didn't, without saying anything, the next one says, no, I'm on the I was the first, the only one I was going to be baptized that evening. But we, we had four, four men going and three got baptized. And the next day we had a teaching of baptism, and Sunday morning we went to the river again, and we had a very small group, and we had 28 people baptized. Amen. And through the throughout the next week, every evening we were being at the river baptizing people. Yeah. There's, you want to bury that old body. You want to come back a new person. 
And sometimes when, when you when you have come back a new person and we go to revival meetings and we get ignited on fire, we are on the fire on fire, we are just going home, we are just burning on fire. We, oh, Holy Spirit's good. Yes. We're just burning. A week a week after, what happens sometimes? The fire goes down, right? Let's, let's make our own fire at home. Let's make our own fire at home. Make it hotter and hotter. If there's a snake, if there's a snake coming out of that fire, you have something to kill that snake. You have your own fire. Kill that snake. If you don't have a fire, you have to run to the pastor. He says, hey, here's a snake, here's a snake. Hey, can you help me? Can you help me? Oh, each one of us can have our own fire at home. Kill those snakes and those wipers when they come out. Let's kill them. We each can have, we have our own fire. If I fall back into sin, I'm not running back to the pastor. See, hey, pastor, I'm sitting here. And I'm, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You run back to Jesus. You don't run to the pastor. Because yeah, you have your own fire pillow for you. And the, the hotter you get your fire, the easier your snakes die. Snakes come out when the fire goes hot. And get your own fire going to kill these snakes. Yes. That's the one of God, perfect will of God for you. And when you see somebody that, that needs deliverance, needs freedom, you don't you don't need to bring them to, to the pastor. You are a pastor. You are the, the disciple of Jesus Christ. You don't even need to be a pastor's daughter. <sighs> Jesus calls us to do this. This is, this is a commandment for you. If you have accepted Jesus already, this is a command of Jesus. Go heal the sick. He never told he's never telling you to go pray for the sick. Does he? Nope. He, says heal. he says, go heal the sick. Amen. Cast out demons. Raise the dead. Freely you have get. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This one time, we went to a man's and man, me and this Mr. Peters, you want to stand up? We had ministered a lot together, and I'm not allowing him to have the mic, because he would air my dirty laundry. <laughs> I have put him in a, on a spot so many times. I, I don't even know how he still ministers with me. But he's a power, powerful, powerful man of God. I was, we went to a men's camp and there was this homosexual guy and I had experienced deliverance from it. And I had shared a testimony. This guy says, if, that, if, that, if that's a demon, I want to get rid of it. He says, that's cool, come on. I, I was so confident. I said, hey, Mr. Peters. There's a guy, he's a homosexual guy, and he needs deliverance. And I knew for sure he had a lot of experience. Because I didn't know what to do up there. I've never seen it, I've never experienced it. That, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, he comes. Well, he's thinking, I have experience, he's only going to pray. He had never done it either. <laughs> so if you have a guy up here, up here doing deliverance on him, but not knowing what we're doing, and I didn't know what to do, but the Lord knew what to do. I just went and I grabbed this guy by the neck like this and it says, Devil in the name of Jesus, you want to leave. This guy started manifesting. Ah! And he grabbed me by the side and I had to grab me, go devil. And we were just screaming and screaming. Mr. Peters, he was like, And I was just praying for this guy, praying and praying. And, that was, and, he, he, and he was screaming like a, a big bull. I had never heard of people to manifest. This was crazy. People to manifestation, uh, deliverance is not order. God, God is a God of order. He is a God of order. Deliverance is messy because the devil has no order. That's why deliverance so, so many times looks so messy. So many times it looks so messy. But all of a sudden, this guy, he was just, boom, he was out. Hey, I said, hey, Frank, hey. I thought you died. Because there we go. I'm just trying to do the Lord's work and killing people. That's what I'm doing. And I was just, woo. Like for a good three minutes, I was just waving over my world. He, he was just, he, he was laying in the spirit. But I had never seen this before. I've never heard of it. And I thought I just prayed him to death. My grandpa, he was smiling after he had been delivered. This guy died. Three minutes later, he came back and I thought he had revived them. Because I, I, I was new to this. I had never heard it. Nobody was teaching me. I was just reading my Bible. And if I read that in my Bible, I'll do it. I'll try it. I don't care what you think. Because my Bible says it. And if the Bible says it, it's happening. I don't care who watches, what you think, or whatever. 
And when we were done deliverance, weren't, weren't there four more guys lined up at the door waiting for deliverance? And okay, now we know how to do deliverance. Absolutely. That's this guy chip them off and get the next one in. <laughs> and I was doing the same thing. And the next one I grabbed him by his neck and did the same thing over and he goes praying in tongues. And this guy was scared to death. He was like, <laughs> That's all he was doing. That's it. We were praying in tongues, we were demanding demons to go right, left, and center. Nothing happened. And I said, we need to do something. I said, you be on one side of his ear, and I'll be on the other side of his ear. And we would be praying in tongues as loud as we could. Scare those demons out of him. Just, we had done so many things, and this just didn't work. So we just ran right up his ear, just as close as we could. And we started screaming in tongues as loud as we could. And that guy was freaked out, and he was gone. I keep saying, I, I forgot his name. I would have gone apologize already to him if, if I knew who, where he was or who he was. I, you know his name? No, I always know he didn't want to get there. Yeah, but I, I think we got some more demons into him instead of rid of him. <laughs> the way we handled the case, because it, it was very unwise what we did. And we did, we did deliverance on a few more people. And a different person came and they brought a wheelchair because we had said we believe in healing. He was in the wheelchair. And then always I was trying to get Mr. Peters to pray first because I didn't know how to. And he was thinking I was the expert, not knowing that I didn't know how to. And I was just leaning on him. And he was and later he told me that he had been leaning on me. Both of us didn't know how to. And he just put his hand. This was in the mountains and there was a cliff down there. And then we had this little room here where we were praying for, for this man. And he says, Jesus, come heal this. Jesus, touch this guy and heal this guy. I said, that's not how we do it. I said, Peter and John says, make the guy look in the eye. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. I yanked that old man out of his wheelchair. I told a different guy, push that wheelchair off of that cliff. This guy is healed. The guy didn't, the guy didn't say that he was healed. <laughs> but I just knew in the name of Jesus, this guy, this person has been healed. And that, that wheelchair was going off of the cliff. And I says, but, but it comes to real like you go and you walk. That's exactly what I did. He had no option but being healed. <laughs> we, were just, we were just being crazy. We didn't know any better. And Mr. Peters made him walk at least from 100 meters downhill, his hands up, praising the Lord. He says, this, this sickness is not coming back and you're walking down this hill by yourself. <laughs> but God is good. We were like, like kids. We didn't know any better. You were just confident if the Bible says that it, 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 so, it so happens. And we should be confident, shouldn't we? Yes. Absolutely. So for so long, we've been trying to counsel demons. And don't, you can't counsel those suckers. You can't teach them nothing good. Because they're evil. That's all they know. They don't know any, any good. They, they need to be removed. And when Jesus says remove them, then we should, we should go and remove them. And I would just like to let every demon know, if there's a demon in this house, you're in trouble today. Because today is the day you're leaving. Today is the end of your story. Today you're all leaving. The freedom of God is here. Jesus says in John 16, 27, my peace I give to you. My peace I'll let you have. You can have my peace. And do you know peace is a person? Yes. Two weeks ago I was in the shower and something had said, Somebody had said something very bad at me, about me, very ugly, and I just hated it. And I was being in the shower, and I was praying. I said, "Jesus, I don't. If, that, if your peace is still with me, let me feel it, because I don't feel no peace right now. I, I feel like punching those guys' lights out. And that doesn't doesn't feel like peace." The Holy Spirit spoke to me. He says, "Well, if you only want to have peace when you feel it, you will never have it, or almost never. Peace is a person." Peace is, you take it by faith. Even if I couldn't feel the peace, the peace was there. And that settled me down. Jesus says, says in John, John chapter 14, two times, don't let your hearts be troubled. If my heart is troubled, what do I do? Run to the pastor or speak to my heart? I was seven hours away from home when my wife was killed and I had three kids at home. 
I have no words to tell you what all went through my brain during that drive home. I was drinking liters and liters of water and my heart was racing and it felt like stopping. And I told the driver to stop, stop right now. And he stopped and I jumped out of the car and I was running beside the hot, on the highway in the ditch. And I was speaking to my heart. I says, heart, right now you come down in the name of Jesus. Jesus says, don't let your hearts be troubled. And Jesus, right now, I need you. I need you to teach me how to speak to my heart because nothing makes sense anymore. Like says, Jesus, I know you are still the same. You will never change. And I need you to teach me how to speak to my heart. And when your heart gives you trouble, speak to it. Yes. Amen. That's the best solution. You have the authority to control your heart where your heart goes. If anxiety hits, like four months after, oops, 10 months after my wife died, my oldest son says, if anybody's going to get depression, it's not our family, it's the devil. It's yes. the devil at work. Yeah. Mom died premature. And if anybody's going to have depression, it's for the devil, it's not for us. 10 months later, I found myself driving to places. I was Sometimes I was three hours away. I still have no idea how I got there. The doctor found out about it. And he says, you need to go to his crisis center. I went to a crisis center in April of 2020 five, for five days. And every day they would give me these papers to fill out everything out to diagnose me with something. And I didn't know what I was doing there. On day three, my doctor walks in and he says, uh, you've been diagnosed with a severe case of depression. These pills, will, you will have to have them for, for, for all of your life. And for now, we will give you four, four types of pills. But this is depre depression that you have. It says depression? Depression for me? He says, that's all you have. It's, you're, you're, you're in a deep depression. He says, it's way worse than you think it is. It says, in the mighty name of Jesus, it needs to go right now. I have told God I will not be depressed. And this depression is not my portion. This depression is for the devil. And I'm sending it right back to you. And I'm not having it. And the doctor came and he, he had all these pills. I went to the toilet and I flushed those toilet, put those pills in the toilet in front of the doctor's eyes and I flushed them down. I said, I'm sorry, toilet, there's a lot of damage for you, but I, can, I know you can handle it better than I can. <laughs> and I, I got dressed and I laughed at the crisis center right at that moment. I have never, I'm not saying I've never been depressed, but that depression was gone. Yeah. It's, yeah. We have authority over that. Yeah. I slipped into it without thinking with it. But when I found out I was in there, I didn't run to a pastor. I had my own fire to, to put that wiper in. And that's my prayer for every one of you, that you will create your own fire if there are snakes coming in your life. Pastors are good. Pastors can help us. We should go to, to the pastor for advice. But Jesus is number one. And if you have your own fire, snakes will, go, will die at your house. Every demon that's been talking in your house. We had a guy... His wife hated him and his family hated him. And he says, devil, if there's such a thing as a demon, give me a demon family tonight. Because my family hates me and I hate them. He was a, he was a drunkard. I don't know if you still remember that man. And we went to see him 15 years later. And he says, when he asked the devil to give him a demon family, he got a, a, a man and a wife and 12 kids on his yard. He was watching them. They entertained them every single day. He really enjoyed life. He says, when he went to the store, he says, yeah, today, don't, he said he could never touch them. They wouldn't allow him. He couldn't touch them, but they, he could always see them. And he says, yeah, today, these two kids, you can come to the store and we go shopping. And he told these demon kids, whatever you want to buy at the store, you just throw it off the shelf and I'll buy it for you. And every time they would throw something off the shelf. And he just loved that demon family. He was so impressed with this family. After his kids were all married, got out of the house, these demons would start coming in his bedroom. And they would shake his bed at night. They would throw stuff off the table, turn the table upside down in the house. They would literally kick him out of his own house. The only place where they would allow him to sleep was on his crap in the backyard. That was the only place where the demons, that's where the demons drove him, that's where he, where he had to sleep. When we found this guy, I said, let's go to this man's camp, would you come? He says, I have no money. I said, I don't care. I didn't ask for money. He says, are you sick of this? Scrap your here? He says, yes, I'd love to get off, off here, but he says, my de the, the demons will never allow him. He says, let's go to the scam. We took him to the scam. 
and he got a full deliverance. This guy, he was so skinny, he was skin and bones, it was all that was left of him. He couldn't eat anymore. The enemy had almost killed him. And he got a full deliverance from that, yes. from that demon family. It just needed to be removed. And the demons only leave by force. The kingdom was taken by force. But what do we take it back? Jesus has, has I gave him the authority. Luke 10, 21, Jesus says, I gave him the authority to stand over the power of the enemy. Some people say that the, the, the enemy is powerless. Well, if Jesus, Jesus said, I've given you authority to stand over the power of the enemy. We cannot pretend there is no enemy. There is no power. I used to be so scared of the devil. It was like, who knows what a big German chopper dog is. Yeah. The enemy was running around like that. I was like a little kitten, soaking wet, hiding wherever I could. And the enemy was saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like a big German chopper. I was scared to death. At night I couldn't sleep. I was terrified. Sometimes I would sit under four blankets and I would still feel this enemy stomping here. I was so scared. When I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit says, now you can exchange that. The enemy can go under there and you can stomp your foot by him. You can grieve him. You can trouble him. You should be a dangerous person to the kingdom of darkness. If you have Jesus, you are a danger to the enemy. We can push back the gates of hell. Get back what the enemy has stolen from you. Don't let him run with the things. God has given you authority. Now the enemy sits there. Ephesians 4.27 says, don't give the devil a foothold. Now if he can go a bit like a big German chapter and the enemy is hiding from us, he wants to get away from us. When Jesus came around, when there, there was demons, demons started manifesting, but they wouldn't leave until Jesus would tell them to leave. When we read Ezekiel 13, maybe you know these verses off the heart. But I see these verses still being so much alive. Like witchcraft, we are, we've been Christians. I grew up a Christian. We had nothing to do with witchcraft. Nothing, nothing whatsoever. We were Christians. But we were living in witchcraft. That's what we were doing. Like me having these clips at school, combing those little girls hair, that was witchcraft. Absolutely. We were manipulation is witchcraft. And so many people get manipulated by their pastors today. Tonight, I encourage you, don't believe a word I say. Go to the scriptures and say, if the scripture says it so, and if the scripture says it, it settles it. It doesn't matter what, what John has said. What the scripture says, that is the truth. And the truth will set you free. Jesus says that. Amen, brother. Ezekiel 13, verse 18. And I say, thus says the Lord, O God, this, thus says the Lord God, woe to the woman who sew magic charms on their sleeves and make veils for the heads of people of every height and hunt souls. Can you hear? They hunt souls. These churches, they're hunting souls. There's so many pe people. And if you have a head covering and whatever you wear a dress, if you wear it in order to go to heaven, it is wrong. I know there's there's people here today. You don't believe your head coverings and your dust are going to bring you to heaven. Not at all. I know you don't believe that. And don't feel bad when I say this. But can we say there are so many people, but you were to a point that your pastor told you if you wouldn't do this, you wouldn't go to heaven, right? I was in a church like this. And Jesus hated that. He says that's hunting souls. And if we've been hunted today, Let's, trans let's change that today. Let's, let us hunt the demons. If the demons have been hunting us, let's, we will hunt them. Yeah. Yes. We will not cast out demons because we hate people. We love people, but we hate the demons. Yeah. And we interrogate the demons. And we cast them out of people. Yeah. Religion kicks the person out of church with a demon. And they need to leave. Christians kick demons out of people and keep the people in church. Yes. Set them free. Yes. That's the order of God. And here it says they were hunting souls and make veils for, the, for heads of people of every height and hunt souls. Will you hunt 
the souls of my people and keep yourselves alive? God says, do you, you think you will hunt the souls of my people and stay alive? It's not going to happen, he says. I'll get you, I'll hunt you. Amen. The next verse says that I will, and will you profane me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread, killing people who should not die and keeping people alive who should not live? By your lying to my people who listens to lies. He says, you're killing people that should be alive and you're letting people live that should be dead. Yes, Does that mean we should go start stabbing people, kill them? No. I see that in my sensationism. If there was a person, spiritual person came close to me, I was trying to kill that spirit on, on the inside of him. He should, should have been alive. I was trying to kill him. But all these dead people that comfort me, I should have killed those dead spirits, make them alive. Yeah, come on. And verse 20 says, Therefore trust, says the Lord. Therefore trust, trust says the Lord God. Behold, behold, I am against your magic charms by which you hunt souls. They're like birds. I will tear them from your arms and left and let the soul go. The souls you hunt like birds. He says you hunt these souls like birds. I remember being in a bird cage. When I was and I had this encounter with the Holy Spirit and this Mr. Peter said they prayed over me. Where I said yesterday where I was so mad about them. And later when they when they laid hands on me and they prayed over me, I got my freedom. It was like I was coming out of this cage. I was flying around, sitting on every tree I wanted to. Because I was out of a cage. I had been in there for 47 years of my life. I had been in a cage. And if none of you ever have been in a cage, you will not understand what I'm saying. But I know here's people, you have been in a cage. And when you come out of that cage, you will never go back in there. If a bird gets out of a cage, one will it ever fly back in there and sit in there. No, it won't. He will never go back to that cage where we came from. I would like us to rise to our feet. Start renouncing things that we want to get rid of. I will renounce some things you can repeat, but you can do your own renouncing that you want to get rid of. And get ready for deliverance. Get ready for your freedom today. The Lord wants to set you free. I will be, I will start renouncing. You can repeat after me. And if you have your own things to renounce, renounce your own things in your own words. I will probably not, I, ha, I don't even have half of what we have. But that's that's our renouncing. I renounce, I renounce. All, witchcraft. all the witchcraft. That's how it been put on me. I renounce all generational curses. I renounce all curses known and unspoken over me. I renounce every soul, ungodly soul high. I renounce every religious demon in my life. I renounce occult teachings that I have listened to. I renounce all bitterness. I renounce cancer. I renounce arthritis. I I renounce depression. I renounce unforgiveness. Every unspirit go out in the name of Jesus. Oh my life! Right now! In the mighty name of Jesus! Devil, you loosen your grip! And go out right now in the mighty name of Jesus. But that's how I would ask Pastor Jason to come up. I demand every unclean spirit in the mighty name of Jesus if you are inside of these people. Get out if right you are hiding in a hindering spirit, in a monitoring spirit, in yes. a hiding spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus yes. Christ.
I command you manifest yourself right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. I command you in the mighty name of Jesus, if you are inside of any of these people right now, manifest yourself right now. I command you in Jesus' name. I command you in Jesus' name. Right now, Jesus name. Freedom. Listen, folks, if you have anything that you feel is hindering you, and you won't free from it. Yes. Come forward right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Come forward right now in the mighty name of Jesus. This is some of our deliverance team. If you are on the, the Terre Haute deliverance team, you can come forward too. Yes. And help in the mighty name of Jesus. These people are anointed by God to pray for you. God is going to set you free. You need some healing. You need some healing. You have something coming against you. Don't be afraid. Come forward in the name of Jesus. We will bind the devil and he will go. Every time, every single time, we will bind the devil and he will go. He will come out in Jesus' name. Come forward quickly in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you right now. Friends, there are five things that will block you from your deliverance. The number one thing that will keep a, a demon from manifesting and getting out of your body. We covered it tonight is unforgiveness. A lot of times we, 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 we hold on to bitterness from our parents that have done wrong to us. Maybe you've been abused. Maybe you've been molested. Maybe you've been abandoned or mistreated. And you've been broken inside and you need freedom. If that's you, I ask you please to come forward tonight. See, deliverance is for the Christians. Freedom, freedom is, for, is for you. Yes, absolutely. Freedom is for you. Say this, say Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Christ of Nazareth. Christ of Nazareth. Today I stand. Today I stand. In your forgiveness. In your forgiveness. And I ask Father. And I ask Father. Right now. Right now. That you forgive me. That you forgive me. And right now. And right now. I forgive everyone. I forgive everyone. I want you to think of anybody maybe you haven't forgiven. And just say their names right now. Yes, Father. You don't have to shout it out. Just say, Father, I forgive and say their names. The enemy doesn't want you free. You know the right words to say. Yes. You know when to raise your hands, when to stand up, when to sit down. You know the lingo of church. You know how to smile. You know how to fake it till you make it. But the Lord wants you to truly make it. Amen. Come on, let it go. Let it go, let it go right now. Some of you need inner healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, yes Father. You know, a lot of times we forgive the people that have hurt us, but we cannot. Because we have not forgiven ourselves. Yes. If you're here tonight and you have not forgiven yourself for the things that you have done to people, maybe you sold crack to them, maybe you did wrong, maybe, 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 maybe you got involved in, 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 in sexual relations that you should not have, maybe you committed adultery, maybe you did fornication, uh, maybe you went back to drugs, maybe you, maybe you. You cause somebody to fall back into lust. Maybe you've done some things that you have not let go of. And, and wherever you are tonight, forgive yourself right now. Forgive yourself right now. Say, Father, I forgive myself. You know you're here tonight. You know you need freedom. But you're still standing there. God will free you from your enemies, but he will never free you from your friends. Preach it. See, friends, when I was a, even as a pastor, I was tempted. Temptation is something that happens. But when thoughts that are intrusive come into your mind, and you try to get them to leave, but they don't go, and you hold on, you know you want the freedom. Let me pray for you. God will set you free.
He sees right into your soul. Everything that you've been holding on to, tonight is the night that it will come out. It will let go. The enemy doesn't want you for this. The enemy doesn't want you free, but I don't care what he wants. I want to see freedom in your life. Amen. God wants to see freedom in your life. When in doubt, cast it out. Come forward. Amen. Let us pray. You say, I don't know if this is the devil or if this is me. I've been there. Let us pray. There is power in prayer. Amen. What will a prayer hurt? See, you've been struggling with depression. You've been struggling with anxiety. You, you're afraid to even go out your house, especially when COVID happened. You're afraid. That is a spirit of fear. You need to let it go. Tonight, it's time to let it go. Hallelujah, Father. We thank you right now. We thank you right now. Thank you.